Welcome to Countdown to Infinity, a Marvel's Avengers podcast. We talk all things Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU, and we're smack dab in the middle of our episode by episode talk on the new Disney Plus series, She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Tatiana Maslany as She-Hulk and as Jennifer Waters, Walters, well, sorry, Jennifer Walters, <laughs> um, a lawyer who is really killing it in her firm. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, oh, we're going to talk about this episode. Before that, just some housekeeping. You can always go to patreon.com slash Delphin to support the pod, see a bunch of cool new stuff. And also we will be talking about D23 and all the MCU stuff. Uh, so keep an eye out for that this week. I'm joined, oh, my name's Emmanuel, but I'm joined by a very special guest. Someone who, let's just say, might be might be looking for a She-Hulk type on the dating apps. A big mm. WWE wrestler. Who yes. Can, I don't know. I kind of like to be lifted up and thrown over the shoulder. Uh, Carry like me around. Of- throw me around the ring. Uh, yeah. You're right. I mean, yeah, that's my specific... Uh, dating app filter that I uh, select, and most most don't even have that filter, so I'm just I'm done with them. I, I, you know. <laughs> it's Brent. Brent, thanks for being back on. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. We talked last week about the last episode of She Hulk, and honestly, kind of the the kind of shift in tone from the other MCU stuff, and how we sort of enjoy her in her in her element. Um, a lot happens in this episode. We meet a couple. We meet a we meet a magician. Or maybe not a real magician, or at least someone who doesn't have a total control of the mystic arts. Um, we meet Madison uh, with two N's and a Y, not where you think it is. Brent, where mm-hmm. did you think that Y was in spelling Madison? You know, I didn't think about it until after I saw the subtitles and then, like, near yeah. the episode when she says it for like the second or third time. And I was like, I think I always would have thought that it was. S Y N N. But I guess when she says it, she's presuming people are thinking it's M A D Y, right? S I N N. Yeah. But, uh, you know, clearly a fun little joke about how silly names are these days and how silly spelling is. Uh, It's absolutely something that I am pretty aware of with, uh, you know, I have a four year old and before we knew if he was going to be a boy or girl, we were looking at names all over the place and uh, boy, it is just, it is just a wild, wild West of, of naming people's kid of naming your kid these days. Yeah. Um, Those books. Yeah. We spellings and just that, that was something that we, uh, that we were absolutely avoiding from, (laughs) from second one was a, a, a fun, no offense to these people or their parents. I just want to say, but is is kind of a, a different spelling of a name we've heard before. But let's kind of let's put a fun, you know, Gen Z spin on it, baby. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the joke that they were, uh, you know, having fun. Yeah, with and and le- and Madison, who is someone who was accidentally transported to a quote unquote diff dimension. Um, is played by Patty Guggenheim. Just want to give her a shout out because she does such a fantastic job playing this <laughs> archetype of maybe you're right, like kind of a millennial Gen Z party girl yeah. um, who is kind of oblivious to what's happening to her. She's also in Reno 911 in a show called Mr. Mayor and Superstore. So it seems like she she's into you know com- comedy a lot, and I think it's she's really funny in this. But uh, yeah. we're also introduced to Donnie Blaze. Um, who is that, that, uh, I guess, I don't know. What do you, what do you, what would you call him? He's just like a kind of a show magician or something. Or, it's or, kind or, of a, and I, I, I'm forgetting what other show or, or maybe two have kind of spoofed the, um, the, the kind of like Chris Angel esque magician of kind of like this, mm. like cool shirt open hot guy who's doing like dangerous magic and like it's it's a spoof kind of on the was it like rick and morty or i I can't remember what it it, what it was but um yeah that's kind of like who he is he's kind of a when and this is an element that i of the episode of of really the mcu that i was hoping they would get into more but uh, and and i guess maybe it's a little bit inferred with kind of like the initial audience reaction to his like magic illusions, whatever you want to call it, where people are just kind of like bored 
because it's like it, my thinking when he first showed up was like it doesn't matter how you could be uh I, I almost said david blaine but also david copperfield he's a big magician right did i get that name right yes um there you go i feel like you could be either of those guys you could be like a a, a vegas you know show magician in the mcu world and people are going to be bored you know because it's yeah. like you live in this this heightened reality now where you've seen so much crazy shit. Um, yeah. You know, the episode doesn't really get into that. Like, it, it really is that his magic is kind of like, you know, a little lackluster. He's a he's a dropout <laughs> uh, of the uh, School of Mystic Arts or uh, whatever it's called. I, f- I forget the name. Um, which is a fun little twist uh, on, on his character. He was there for like a week and then he got like... <laughs> two of his frat buddies there with like a keg and they got like kicked out. That's kind of a great backstory. Um, Dang. but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, he, he was really funny. I, th- I thought he was like a good foil for like the, what seems to be taking shape with the show. And I like a lot of the kind of like a uh, case of the week type format, which I think is a really fun way to do, um, a character like she Hulk, which I'm not, I'm again, I'm not familiar with, with the she Hulk comics. Um, we're like, I'm fully off, off book now with the MCU at this point. Um, so every new show and movie, I'm basically like, Oh yeah, I don't, I didn't know about this. This is cool. This is a cool thing to see. Um, but yeah, he has a, he has a funny, uh, you know, role to play in, in this episode. I liked a lot. I'm, I'm really, I think it's funny because he obviously has some kind of magical ability is why he even has the ability to open up into, you know, different dimensions, although he doesn't, he can't control it well. Um, But Wong, I think is back, which is exciting. And I think Mm -hmm. one of the fourth wall breaks is Jennifer uh, Walters talking about how Wong is back, but Wong kind of taking this personally as Sorcerer Supreme and also striking like a fun friendship with Madison, like a good, that was I, I would think, stinger Wong-y. at the end. Too. Wongers. Wongers. Yeah, Wongers. Yeah. yeah, just hanging out. I thought that was really <laughs> funny. Um, talking about Donnie Blaze there. Also, he's got a sidekick. Uh, uh, I guess the name of the sidekick is Cornelius P. Willows. And I, th- I just thought it was cool to note that he's played by an actor named Leon Lamar, and who is 104 years old. So there's an wow. older man in this. And he can, he's kind of just like a cheerleader for Donnie Blaze. Um, but that is someone who's 104 years old acting in the MCU. I thought that's really um, that fun cool. and notable. I mean, he, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say he, uh, yeah, he outlives so many other actors and people just in general. But yeah. it's the queen it's nice herself. Set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <R&D. laughs> <laughs> He's killing it. And kind of like, and what's fun too is the Mystic Castle, I think is supposed to be like that. Uh, have you heard of that? It's called Magic the Castle. Magic Castle. Yeah. yeah. Invite only, you know, close up magic entertainer. Mm. Neil Patrick Harris is there. JJ Abrams with their magic boxes. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of fun magic stuff. Well, let's talk about the case in general. I mean, it's kind of, there, there are a lot of sorcerers out there. So it would make sense that some of them kind of stray from the Dr. Strange Wong path. Of, mm-hmm. You know, a karmatage and just use their magic for, for evil, including accidentally bringing demons into our world. But you're right. This world is such a heightened place to where people are dating a She-Hulk um, mm-hmm. and also not wincing at the fact that someone is traveling dimensions, I guess. That it can just be tried in civil court. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was really funny. Um, yeah. In... in uh yeah, I just I loved in general like Madison's kind of just like lack of kind of um, uh, I don't know like awareness, but also like she she wasn't really phased by <laughs> the portals to the other realm. Even yeah. like when she's talking about like at the end out, and she says it twice, which like I I hope it's a setup. But even if it's just a joke, it works on its own. But just like she made a deal with a demon <laughs> to, to, uh, yeah. to get out of there, which I hope that's a setup for some kind of wild shit. Uh, you want to spin off a joke. Madison, a Madison spin-off. sold her soul to a demon uh, <laughs> spin off would be wild to see. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, a wild world uh, that this MCU inhabits now. And I, I just love every time, a show or uh, it's usually a show now, but like a show will slow down to the point to like examine different areas of things like that. Like, like in She-Hulk is doing it 
in a big way with like, you know, um, the superhuman lot of vision uh, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that stuff is really cool to see. Um, the other story I think going on, I think, uh, well, I don't know if you would call it like a B story, but the part of this that makes it feel uh, kind of special and just different from other, uh, you know, law procedurals, even comedies is the fact that uh, she Hulk or uh, uh, Jennifer is also trying to, uh, attempt at, at having some kind of a dating life. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't know if this is predictable, but when she is human or her, her, her actual personality, she doesn't get a lot of traction on the dating apps, but the second she's she Hulk, really the freaks come out. <laughs> oh, the print <laughs> because in mass, there's a, like her there's a nice montage up. of real weirdos, just solid freaks <laughs> who go out to date with her. Uh, yeah. But Brent, who am I to judge? I think I would. I I think I would. I would at least try. I I would swipe right very fast. Uh, I think I would. She Hulk call me. Listen, Jennifer Walters call me. Uh, I just want to say most unrealistic thing about the show so far is Tatiana Maslany is like an eleven, and yeah. it's it's downright absurd to me that she is not getting hits on her dating yeah. profile. And even she's with a her lawyer. Exactly. Even with that, even with that kind of like law firm photo, it's still like you'd still get some, you'd still get some cuck boys. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> I think it, I think it's fun too because we don't really see this ever in the MCU. The the romances we see are normally they they normally end in tragic heartbreak, um, or they're very much like based on a workplace. Basically, you're Avengers, you go to work together. And you'll strike yeah. up, uh, uh, you know, even like some of the best ones, uh, like Tony Stark and and uh, Pepper Potts, like, you know, it's kind of a uh, an HR situation there as well. Like, but this is <laughs> an actual outside of her day job um, trying to find love. Yeah. And I thought that was really fun. Yeah, it, it's funny. Uh, I wish I could reference the specific article, but somebody wrote. I think a really good piece about um, how like sexless the MCU is it's, it's not without romance, but it is so PG when it comes to mm -hmm. like relationships and sex and sh portraying anything like that, that like, I think this might be the most uh, we've ever seen in the MCU maybe that I can even think of outside of Brand, maybe like, I think in <laughs> You Star forgot Lord. an hour, an hour and 13 minutes into Eternals. I'm just kidding. Uh, That's not the real time stamp. I did. I'm not, a, I'm not a weirdo. Oh, you're right. Um, oh, you're right. I did. But you're I right. Like that, that. Yeah. That's a, that, that also isn't necessarily the template MCU movie. That is a very different um, yeah. vibe type of movie. And even then the romance is incredibly like, I don't know, operatic. It's austere. Almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's very I'm, not, I'm not I'm not sitting here being like every every show and movie's gotta have some have some just dirty, yeah. dirty banging. Yeah. Like uh, but yeah, it is it, at a certain point it's like, I mean, come on. I mean, these are, you know, all the most gorgeous people on earth in every mm -hmm. uh, show and movie, uh, you know, come on guys. It's, um, so it's nice. It's, it's, it's nice to see. Yeah, I think this, and you know, we get a lot of kind of these uh, family at home dynamics from uh, Miss Marvel and Kamala Khan as well. But I think it's partially just because the stakes are, are lower, which I like. There isn't a yeah, yeah. ticking time bomb, which <laughs> it happens literally in everything single MCU thing. And yeah. um it it does feel like we're able to breathe and kind of just I mean, I really don't know how long these episodes take place in in the world, but it could be a week, it could just be a couple of days. But mm -hmm. um it's nice. I mean, even now, what well, you know, at the end of this, the stinger that leads you into the next episode is how uh Jamila Jamil's uh um uh, uh, Titania character just has a trademark on She-Hulk and that is the it's probably going to be a case like a like just a court case but that is about mm -hmm. how high the stakes end up at least in this episode like it, it's never too yeah. wild even though someone did try to take her blood earlier uh, and her dad's helping her out trying to protect her it doesn't it, it, it's not like the there's like a there, there there isn't a lot of overbearing weight on the show so far yeah, and it feels, uh, 
I'm just running through the other ones in my head. It feels easily the most procedural yeah. um, outside of like, I guess what if where each episode is like a short film. I don't mm. think that really counts, but like, um, yeah, it feels very procedural where it's like, it, it feels like a, like one of those like kind of law shows where it's like, there's a case and then some stuff's happening in their personal life. And like, you know, we've seen hints at like, there's a little something going on behind the scenes, but at least so far it feels very much like each week is going to be like a new case. Um, and I like that a lot. I like uh, the, the MCU kind of expanding into um, a little bit of a different format than the kind of like tried, tried and true kind of serialized story, you know? Yeah. Anything that you saw in this episode that you're kind of keeping an eye on? I mean, I, I, I don't, I say that, I mean, like in, in future eps, there's, I, we talked about the montage of creeps that there was one specific weirdo who was asking very specific questions about oh, she right. that I yeah. felt. And that actor too is kind of a, we, we've seen him in a bunch of other stuff playing mm-hmm. a similar type of character. And when I saw that in my head, at least I was like, huh, this guy is different from the rest in how creepy he is. And I felt yeah. like he was going to come back at some point because we I still think, have yeah. that storyline where people are trying to get, um, you know, her blood and, and maybe reverse engineer some kind of Hulk serum. Yeah. I think, I think that's definitely what was going on with that guy. I, I forgot because in my head I was like, Oh, I don't think they alluded to the bigger story. Those guys working for somebody, um, mm-hmm. but they, they did. And it was, it was within that montage of the guy who, yeah, it was, who was creepy, but was like asking more and more about like her skin and like, so you're not invincible. Uh, mm-hmm. so your skin can't be penetrated and something like that. And it was just like, oh, okay. I see. Cause like he obviously, they learned the lesson of like, yeah, our shit didn't work. So, uh, and then she said vibranium, right? Like she, she said yeah. like, Do at least anything of this yeah. world. That's right. Yeah. So I think that that is definitely something that's going to keep developing, but that's a very small little moment in this episode. Like it's not like a big overarching thing. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it will become one by episode, you know, the final episode or two, but, uh, but yeah, not really yet. You know, it's focusing on, on her as a a person who's trying to live with her kind of she Hulk self. um, Yeah. These, these cases that she's, uh, she's trying, you know, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to know how far we get a lot for on her on the personal side in the comic book. She does eventually, just like the the main the other Hulk. Eventually, she also stops transforming back to Jennifer for, for Walters. She just stays She Hulk because mm-hmm. um, it's just easier for her. And we saw in episode one, she doesn't necessarily become like a beast with no mind she has full control autonomy when she is she hulk so i wonder if that's where this is headed it would be kind of sad in a way the fact that she's like well i get i've given up on being jennifer but um it's definitely possible her life seems to be easier she hulk um anyways and it would just be like her cousin because he also is just stuck there not going back but um, yeah yeah any other any other big thing i mean what are you expecting from the next episode apart from what seems to be an ip trial like a trademark trial yeah i'm guessing that we're gonna get more titania uh in jamil jamil um it certainly seems that way she hasn't been in much of the show yet um where it's gonna be episode five um i just read that that uh Daredevil's only going to be in one episode. Um, oh, I, f- so. I forgot he was in the show until you reminded me, right? Yeah, now. yeah. He's just going to be in one episode, which but we're going to talk about the D23 stuff. Uh, they showed a clip of that, and man, I can't yeah. wait. That's going to be good. He's he's about to be everywhere. That's true. I mean, absolutely. Um, and that's great. Uh, but uh, yeah, it seems like that's going to be the kind of case uh, of, of that week. Yeah. Um, feel like we're probably done with Wong. Seems like he's pretty happy watching The Sopranos. That's yeah, I thought we were done last week with Wong though. And and yet another person has one of those sling rings. So, yeah, exactly. Knows? Yeah. Um yeah, and the the that was that was kind of a fun ending to um you know, the kind of arc of not even not even uh ending of it, but like I I love when uh 
he opens the portal to like, it looks like a hell dimension and all those kind of mm-hmm. like weird demons come through and Wong has to like interrupt her, uh, her booty call Date. kind of. And yeah, that was, that was a real fun moment. Um, yeah. I thought that guy was going to be cool too. And then he yeah. saw her and like, it's like, dude, look at her. What? Yeah. What That's what I, I guess he just likes really big, he likes strong yeah. women or something. Devastating. Like, he was, he was reading a book about feminist. He's a, he's a doctor, you know, for <laughs> yeah, children. Right. He is all about her work life balance or whatever. And yeah, yeah. Well, I mean this. I mean that's why this. I feel like this could potentially lead to a Jennifer's not happy at all as herself, and then she's just She Hulk forever. Because mm. I mean, I, there hasn't been apart from her best friend, who is super supportive. Everyone else seems to prefer She Hulk, you know, and that's. That that would be kind of be sad, kind of devastating, but it would, yeah. Um, or she, or she, it is kind of setting up her meeting somebody that is cool. Um, yeah, you know, you know who wouldn't who wouldn't mind a blind man? Okay. AKA oh, you're talking yeah. Daredevil. That'd be that'd be across the coast because he's uh, famously a New York guy, Hell's Kitchen superhero. Yeah, uh, I mean, hey, my favorite run of his is the San Francisco Daredevil. Yeah. though. So hey, we'll maybe see. they can maybe they can meet in the middle like Benjamin Button style, you know? Just, oh, there you go. Well, that that's actually like meet in the middle in terms of time uh, when it's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to the next step. I think that there is definitely. I mean, Jamila Jamil, I thought was like the main villain, quote unquote. We only saw her once. We saw her kind of in a news feed in this episode, but it's sort of. You know, I don't know. And of course, she's getting sued. So it's going to be really interesting. Um, But yeah, there's definitely something going on with people trying to get her power or some kind of something from her. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see all that stuff, too. I'm digging how low stakes this is. I prefer it sometimes. Like there isn't some giant dimensional rift happening. Um, And I mean, Wong is well, I. I don't know, like, if this was a true serialized show, they would almost not even connect at all, like, ever. And yeah. Marvel, I don't think, is totally committing to that because we are getting through lines across episodes. So I don't think they're full on doing that. So I'm, I am interested whether the last episode is is going to be some giant thing that, you know kind of is what is going on with a lot of their series. Like uh, the second to last yeah. episode is the emotional climax. The last and episode then the big is action finale, a big action finale that they like ran out of time and just shoving everything into the last episode. It'd be interesting yeah. to see how that happens here, but um, I'm kind of okay with, with kind of the pace and what's going on. And it's a long series. I think it has many, Nine. many episodes. Yeah. So it's not like we're in a, in a rush to get anywhere. But yeah, yeah, overall, still enjoying the show. Love the stink. Maybe, mm-hmm. right? Maybe the best after, I don't know what you call them, stingers, after credit scenes, or just kind of one off cold closings that are funny. Some of the yeah. best are from the show, honestly. Like, they're really, really good, man. Yeah, they're really good. And then her like fourth wall break was fun in this, where she's like, boy, it's kind of a bummer ending. Maybe the stinger will be fun. Like, she, I think yeah. she says that, like, directly, and then it is. It's it's Madison yeah. and him, and she, like, makes him a drink while they're watching Sopranos. Talking about yak milk, and yeah, this is us, <laughs> so, yeah. I think, towards, I, I, yeah, that's they're it's watching very this aware. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really very good, funny. I think. Well, if, if anything, just watch it for that, because they're really, really funny, and I hope we see Madison again. Um, yeah, but yeah, let very, us know what you thought about this episode. Um, She-Hulk, I think, is totally bingeable, so if you're waiting to watch them all, you can, I think, too they're pretty short episodes they're half hours um yeah uh but very light episode but brent we've come to the end of this pod what do you have to plug oh man uh just all the all the delphin pod uh patreon stuff um you and i are always talking about movie shows the screen slush stuff um what we're watching award season stuff we're getting uh into that we're starting to really get into that stuff now it's starting to starting to get interesting um that's about it yeah nice for sure go to patreon.com support or slash self and pod support all the pods brent and i are there often i believe our d23 episode is going to be a video pod we'll see um and that'll be really fun but thanks so much for listening to this 
We'll see you next week for another episode of She-Hulk. Bye. Bye.